Hi, I'm Josh. Welcome today to my series wrap up for 2023. This video is basically me talking about the series that I finished, the series that I'm DNFing, and the series that are ongoing in the huge list of series that I'm forever reading. This was going to be a wrap up and TBR for 2024, but I realized there were a lot of books that I want to talk about for 2024 and also a lot that I want to say about that which I've already read. So it seemed to make sense just to split it up. But without further ado, let's talk about the series that I've read in 2023. So let's start with the series that I've finished. Bring them all the way through, at least as far as I know them to be done. For the first up, we're going to start with the Litten Verse by Nino Supri. And this is the Finna duology, where you basically have this world where these workers work in a capitalistic Ikea of sorts that is a multiversal hotspot that pull people to different universes. In the first book, that's the premise. In the second one, it takes an equally absurd or out there sci-fi idea and uses it to dissect this capitalist hellhole that is this job and is our society. The second one in the series does a different direction. Like it still focuses on the store, but instead of being a multiverse, it focuses, I think, on items that come from different universes rather than going to those universes. This is a beautiful uh, depiction or rather a dissection of everything wrong with our capitalist system uh, and worker abuse and things that are expected of workers. I talked about this series out of the first book in my best books of 2023 video. You can check that out if you haven't seen it already. But overall, I really enjoyed this. Honestly, even though it is technically finished and more of a set alone and more standalone with each other than or a series, I would love to see more from this. As it stands, the last one was in 2021. And whether we get any more, I guess we'll see, but a solid series and I'm glad I finished it. Next up, the Up and Under series. This series was finished officially last year and I read it and reread it last year as well. I had already read the reverse three. I reread the, the, the final one after reading the first time for a full series review. That review is done and posted if you're interested. I'll just say overall, it is underwhelming. If you're a fan of middle game, read the first book. If you're feeling it, keep going. If not, honestly, you'll find just the first one. The first one really embodies the best that the series has to offer. And it's not that the series is useless. It's just, I don't think it did enough to justify its existence. I have a lot more to say about that. Again, check out the review if you want to hear all those thoughts. Then after that, we have the African Immortals, which I probably have the most to say that I've yet to say on my channel. This is the basically vampire series by Tenerife Du. I started this back in 2020, I think. I believe because there was like a book club going on. They had read the series or reading the series that did not keep going for whatever reason. But I did end up finishing the series. I think I ended up reading a book a year for a while there. I took a bit of a pause because if, in all honesty, while I like this series, it's not what I would traditionally want from a vampire even horror book. It feels more urban fantasy, but at the same time, it is Tanner you do. It explores very real and deep conversations about race, power dynamics, and a lot of other issues that exist within our society. It is also heavily influenced by Christian mythology. And as someone who is not Christian, in fact, an ex-Christian, it, it's always hard to read it. But what I will say is that I actually came to the advantages of the series where despite being a series where its characters' identity are heavily influenced by the Christianity, I think the series surprised me in the direction it ultimately went went and the way in which it was able to challenge our expectations in that sense while also challenging the challenge this idea of what is truly right what is wrong and while as a reader who doesn't want to reach christian fiction i think it does enough to use that world use these characters who are who are still real people because these pe these people exist there are christians though i'm not stupid i know you all might be watching right now it's not that i don't want that exposed in fiction i just think there's a fine line between showing a character's life and their Christian identity versus becoming a form of proselytization. Basically, you know, selling selling to me. And that's really what I don't want. That's why I was getting iffy here. In the end, the series was satisfying and was not a shallow series. It never reached peak for me. I'd probably give the series a solid three and a half. I think the main reason I really pushed through it was because I loved Tanneru Du, and despite not loving the story on a fundamental level, or not getting truly excited about it, it still made me think about these ideas, these themes, in a very good way, in a way that made the series very much worth reading. And now we're going to move on to my DNF series, which I'm realizing now is just one book, Leviathan Wakes. And 
perhaps it's wrong to say that this is DNF. I might feel myself persuaded to pick this up later on, but to be frank, I don't think I am. I didn't dislike this first book. I just don't think the world did enough to pull me in, which is sad. As a planetary scientist, I should really be excited about a series that is based in a planetary civilization. And it just wasn't. I've talked about this before. Basically, the story was more mundane than I was expecting. It focused very much on like just a few characters, which I do love a character-driven story. I just expected the story to use a bit more of this large ecosystem of this planetary uh, civilization to create a more dynamic and well-rounded world. I think the best way I can to compare this, the best thing I can compare this to probably is the, is it, I want to say Chick's Love, that's a crater, the Texcalon duology. That was a very dense and honestly difficult read, but it was one that while being character focused, managed to really make the world feel as big as it's supposed to be. And I think that is the perfect example of how you can be character focused and still have a world that feels truly as magnificent as it's supposed to be. Now I'm on to a uh, To Be Determined series. Uh, that is to say, it's gonna be on hold. It's more that I don't expect to read them this year. The first one's gonna be The Murderbot Diaries. I read the newest book and a arc for that and I appreciate it. It felt like the book was the most dependent on previous books that I can remember. I was very lost when I came to this. Even after starting it over, after reading like 30% of it, I still had trouble. I think if and when I reread the series, which is probably what I'll do when I pick it back up, I would understand it and appreciate it more. But as it stands, I just feel kind of lost. And it made it hard to really enjoy the story, unfortunately. So I'm not going to be rushing to pick the book up. I don't even know that there is the next book advertised for this year, that it's not uncommon for this series to take a year-long hiatus. And even if it does, I'll probably wait until 2025 before I pick it up, especially since there's so many other series that I want to move through. And this one isn't the kind of series where I desperately need to read it to really see what's going to happen next, because it, usually they're pretty good about being pretty standalone uh, in that nature. But I guess I should also say, if you don't know what my diaries is, I just assumed you did. A, a murder bot, sorry, a android, that is designed to basically be a killing machine, brings this governor module, which means it could basically have free will. And it doesn't want to kill though. It just is kind of like kind of an introvert and wants to consume media all the time, like getting good reader shit. I do love the series and it's been too good. It's done too much right for me not to give it the goodwill of returning to it and, and giving it another try, or giving this book another try, the newest book, before I say that this book is just no longer for me. Uh, I do not think that at all. It just didn't come together well, uh, my experience overall. And then next up, The Space Between Worlds. This is the name of the first book that I read, and also it is the name of the series. It's basically a multiversal story about this woman who gets pulled into an alternate universe where things are different. I enjoyed this book. I think I gave it four stars, but I would say this solved four stars, partly because it was just a little underwhelming. I guess you might could say that in the same way that Leviathan Wakes was. I liked the world building, but I think it leaned more fantasy than I realized. Like the alternative world had a lot of the same characters of Pearl World, but it was in this monarchy, which isn't strictly fantasy, but it had the feel of a fantasy more than a sci-fi multiversal story that I was really hoping for. And I think that's what just sort of turned me off to it. Still plan on continuing it. I think though I want to wait until I hear reviews of the second book to make sure it, it, it at least stands up on its own. I don't want something that is a that is less than. I need to be as good as or better than the first book for me to really continue. So that's why this one's going to be a uh, To Be Determined series. After that, we have one more, the Lady Astronaut series. I reread this whole series in 2023, partly because I was having a slump and I just wanted something uplifting. I love this series. Mary Robinette Quill was is one of my favorite authors of all time. And I just adore her writing. I adore this world building. We have an alternate history dystopia where basically Washington was destroyed in the 1950s and it led to a huge space race early on. It, it seems to be, honestly, I think about it, akin to is it the first man, whatever it is on, on Apple TV, but um, I haven't actually watched that one though. I've heard great things. Still, a series that I love, and the only reason I'm not continuing it, because well, one, I just rewatched it, uh, so I reread it, and also the, the newest book, which was supposed to come out last year, based solely on like a, a calendar a listing on her, Mary, Mary Robinette Quill's own personal website like a few years ago and there's still no advertisement for 2024 this should be the last book in the series i think it's called the martian contingency and i will read it when it comes out but i don't think it is going to come out so this one is a series that i loved i read it this year but it's like i said it's on hold for now 
Finally, ongoing series, series that I've read and will be continuing into 2024 or have been continuing. First up, let's say we were children. Always are we children. I love we were children. A world where you have magical doors, kind of like Narnia, except this focuses more on how those worlds fit into the fundamental identity of the person and exploring their own personal identity in a very deep and reflective way, while also dealing with the hurt, the true hurt that comes from losing that part of you when you get trapped away from your world. And this is a beautiful series. For 2024, I'm doing a reread of the whole series. I got lucky and I got the audio arc right at the end of the year, and it's now January 5th, and I, I read the first, the last, the most recent book before the year was out. So technically, I'm not reading any new books for this in 2024. I plan on having a comprehensive discussion of the entire series, next up Stormlight Archive. And I am so excited, less about the book series itself than I am about the fact that I'm excited that I'm excited. I'm excited that I'm excited about this series. That's just because I had such a hard time getting into the first book because it was just a little too much. It was so long and so dense and it, it wasn't the kind of long and dense that I find or found very engaging and enjoyable. But when I reread the first one this year, I finally began to understand what was going on and who was who. And by the end of the first book, at the beginning, I started doing using study aids to try to keep myself up this time. And by the end of it, I didn't need them. Like about half of the book, I stopped having to use those to figure out what was going on. And even after that, that couple months after, I ended up reading the second book. And again, no study aids needed, fully invested, fully love it, and love it. I like it a lot. But I don't love it. It's not a perfect series. I don't understand the perfection people feel about it, but maybe that has to do with more love for the world building, which I guess I, I can understand. Uh, but as far as storytelling goes, like it's good. I don't find it particularly exceptional, but I still really like it. And I am just so excited to continue the series. After that, we have Nemesis series by April Daniels. I think I read book two of three. This is, oh shit, this probably shouldn't be ongoing. This should be in the TBD series. This is a, a, a YA superhero series about a trans girl who gets superhero powers. I really liked it even, like, well, because I don't mind superhero content. Honestly, I do enjoy it. And I really particularly liked it from the perspective it gives us from this trans woman, this trans girl rather, and her identity, both as a trans superhero, but just as a, as a trans girl trying to get by and how that fits into this identity. It's such a unique perspective that I don't think has been given an opportunity to be told. And that's why I think it really stands out. I really do enjoy this. The third book is slated to come out at some point. I finished the second one. It was good. To say is it better than the first one, I, I think the series is fine, solid. And I, th I think if you're intrigued by the premise, I think it will be enough to enjoy and to get what you want from it. It's not a favorite all time, but a solid series that I plan to continue. But honestly, it's probably more on hold until we get the last book. Finally, this last book that I'm going to talk about in this video. Probably, it shouldn't even be here, it's the Oxford History of the United States uh, series, which is just a series of history books about the United States. And I'm saying this because technically it's a series. And technically I read the newest, not the newest, I read the, the book about the early American history. I liked it. I've read three now. I think there was the American Revolution, there was the Civil War, and there was this one about the early American period. I actually only read the American Revolution book as a precursor to this one. I will say that I enjoy this one a lot more than the one about the American Revolution. They each have a different author writing the story. I think sometimes it's just fundamentally better writing and storytelling overall about this part of history. That said, it's also beginning American history isn't a war, and I just don't like war narratives, so that probably didn't help the last book. Will I continue it? I do intend to try and pick up the next book. It's a soft continuing on into this new series, new year, trying to get through this whole series of understanding and learning about American history. They're good enough books. I enjoy them. That's it for the books that I read in 2023, whether for the series that I've been reading in 2023. Let me know if you've read any of these series or if some by some chance I've managed to convince you to. But thanks again for watching. Hope you all have a great day and stay safe and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.